I can tell you I've had a lot of dealings with, with him, and I can tell you that I have a very conflicted uh, feelings about him. I can tell you that my, my views of him uh, when I first started on the case were, were just absolutely negative because I didn't, I'd never met him. And, uh, and knew what he had done. Huh? I, knew, I knew what he'd done. And maybe there's a bit of Stockholm Syndrome going on, and I don't want to get into any of the details, but I, I can just say that, and I, and I said this at the, during the, I think during the sentencing, that, that he's a paradox to me. Um, there, are, there are aspects of his, of his person and his personality that, uh, in my mind, don't square with what he did. And what he did is undisputed. And it's a, it's a very difficult... Uh, uh, it, it, it's a very difficult thing, and it's hard to understand until you've kind of been in, in the shoes of someone who has to, on the one hand, prosecute the person, then cooperate him, and then ultimately uh, say things about him at sentencing. And you know, a lot of a per my personal views really don't matter at all what my personal views of, of, of Nick Calabrese are, but I can just say that he's, he presented a real paradox to me. And I think to everyone who, who worked on the team, you can't just dismiss him as a, uh, as a, as a cold-blooded murderer, and that's the end of the story. That is certainly a huge part of the story, but that's not the end of the story when it comes to his personality and his life. In Kosovo, a lot of my work was relating, some of my work at least, was relating to war crimes and war criminals, and I met my share of people who have the blood of many people, many, many more people than Nick Calabrese on their hands. But a lot of those individuals uh, did their killing through others and did, you know, they had command responsibility, but they ordered other people to commit murders. Uh, there's, there's something different about sitting across uh, from a person having a conversation about politics or about the weather or about what have you, knowing and shaking the hand of a person that you know that face is the last thing that 18 people or 14 people in his case have ever seen. Uh, and that's something that is, uh, is at first certainly particularly eerie. I think that goes away after a while. Um, but but I, I still distinctly remember having that em emotional reaction or, or, or sort of uh, visceral reaction to uh, to meeting him. There's no question he had that, 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 that the person I met, um, had I met him in a street somewhere, at a party, at a, at, a, at a birthday party or something, I would have never in a million years thought that this is an individual who committed a murder or even an assault. Uh, but obviously he did. So, so well, not much to mention my, being, you know, one of the most uh, celebrated, if right. I can use that term, hitmen in the right. history of the right. outfit. Right. So, so much for my ability to judge character uh, uh, in, in his particular case. So, uh, uh, I think, I mean, I, as, I, as there were witnesses at the test, at trial, at the sentencing, family members, um, and also family members, his own family members who, who spoke on his behalf, and I think that their testimony was powerful, which is, but it, it all went to the same point as far as I, I'm concerned, which is that, that he presented a paradox. I know to some people, that's, uh, I know some friends of mine who are defense attorneys, they find an aspect of that person's personality or character that they seize on, so no matter how evil the person's conduct, they always bear that in mind so that they can motivate themselves to try to either set this person free or do something like that. We were not in that position. We knew he wasn't going to go free. We knew he was going to get sentenced, and that was not our objective at all. Um, uh, and I'm not going to say that I, I did the same thing. I'm just saying simply that I think the testimony of everyone during trial and at sentencing portrayed him as a person who did horrendous, un unspeakable, repulsive things to another person and to families of people that are unforgivable. But on the other hand, he was a person who had another side to him that was just a little bit different. If he did any of the things, any of the things that he did to these other people, to my father or my mom, um, I don't think, I don't think uh, eight years, 12 years in jail would be enough. And I would, I would, um, I would I'd definitely seek more, uh, directly or indirectly. So it's a pretty, uh, it is a pretty, um, it must be pretty outrageous for the perspective, from the perspective of these family members, even to see me sitting here saying, well, on the one hand, he had, these horrible crimes. On the other hand, he was a nice guy to me. Um, that in itself probably would strike most people legitimately as, as a perverse thing. And I'm just, and I, I frankly, you know, find myself also some, that's why I say it's a paradox for me. Uh, but you look at a guy like Frank Calabri Sr., who of course I have a little bit of history with, and I'm not probably going to be on his Christmas card list, and he certainly is not on mine. But he did things, um, he was cruel, intentionally cruel. I mean, he did, he, he went out of his way to brutalize people, to, um, to, to revel in the power he had, to revel in the in this position he had within the outfit, and to also decide who dies and who doesn't die, uh, and to never come to cooperate and never atone for his wrongdoings and never try to help 
uh, uh, rectify the situation. Um, now maybe from Nick Calabrese wasn't trying to re rectify anything. Maybe he purely was trying to help himself, and that's totally possible. But, and, and they're both equally culpable and they're both evil, but I'm just simply saying that when you look at a Frank Calabrese and the way he's comported himself in life, and you contrast that to someone like Nick, that is to me why family members of the victims treated them differently, why family members of the Calabreses spoke about them differently. And, um, and again, that doesn't make them one good and the other bad. They're just different shades of bad, but there is a difference between them.